I just want to drive this thing. We've been working on this thing for a couple months now and I have not heard it run, I've not heard it drive, I haven't got to do anything with it ever since the transmission gave us trouble. In the last video we assembled our new engine and put it to our transmission, but it's still not in the car. We still got to put it together and make it fire up for the first time. And on top of that, this car hasn't driven in 27 years. It's never been on the road in that long. I'm going to do that today. I don't care what it takes, I don't care how far we have to go, this car is going to be hitting the road for the first time in 27 years. You stick around to the end of the video and let's find out if I can do it. Well, of course, I forgot something right before I was going to put the engine in the car. This is a 10 AN that's supposed to be for the oil drain I'm putting in the oil pan. I don't want to take it back apart and uh, ruin my pan gasket, so uh, we're going to drill a hole in the pan. Except we're going to be very, very careful to not get any metal shavings down in the pan. <laughs> let's try it. Folks, listen, if you're anything like me and you had a hard time through the Christmas season having to buy everybody's gifts, then you're probably like, man, my wallet really took a hit. Here's the good news though. Dave is here to help. Our sponsor for today can help you get up to $500 instantly with their extra cash. The cool thing about Dave is that there's no interest, no late fees, and no credit checks. That means more money in your wallet to handle those bills and make sure that the Christmas season didn't hurt your wallet as bad as it did. Download the banking app, Dave, and make sure that you have that extra spending money to get you where you need to go. Don't worry about it because Dave's got you covered. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. So don't wait, fill out some info and you're on your way to getting the help you need. Go down to my link below, download dave.com slash McCool, that's dave.com slash McCool, and they can get you up to $500 when you sign up for extra cash right now. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal, instant transfer fees apply, banking services provided by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Thanks Dave for sponsoring the video, let's get back to it. Finally, we have the engine and transmission sitting in the car. This is fantastic, and I, oh, I can't wait to finally hear this thing run. Now, what we have here is an Edelbrock RPM air gap knockoff. This intake is just a, you know, I bought it on Amazon for really cheap, and it looks good. It's got dual patterns for the LA heads or Magnum heads, so that's exactly what I needed because you can't hardly find an intake for these engines, guys. I mean, it's, it's crazy. But anyway, what I've done is uh, once I got the engine sitting in here, I took these Magnum manifolds. Now this is the driver's side manifold and I'm just test fitting this manifold on this side. Over here is the original manifold for my Challenger that I hemi swapped. So it's actually going out the back. I tried to put the manifold from this side over here but it hits the steering box and it also hits the power steering pump when it's actually bolted on. So what I'm thinking we'll do, we'll run a pipe going back, a crossover under the oil pan, and then tuck up under the manifold and tee in to the J-pipe right here, and then a pipe coming up, turbo, and then exhaust wherever it needs to go. But as of right now, our goal is to make this engine run. So we need to bolt down everything, get it finalized, get everything hooked up where it needs to go, and then we can fire it up and hopefully see if it'll work. And it builds a quick RTV gasket here, I don't like the cork ones because they always blow out on me. All right, before we start this thing, we had to go up under the car. We got the mount in, about to put our seal in. But while I was at it, I wanted to go ahead and add this deep pan. Now what I had to do, Add a quick little spacer in between here. It came with the pan. It just drops the filter element down so that way this pan will actually get caught. Look how much thicker that is. That's super deep compared to the factory pan that's only like that thick. A lot of extra capacity, a lot of extra cooling. On top of that, we got the transmission cooler up front. So hopefully this thing lives forever. Man, what a wild couple days it has been. We've got gas hooked up. 
we have a carburetor, we have an intake, we've got everything buttoned up from what I can tell. All the accessories are in place, we've got the serpentine belt on, we've got a radiator in place from Champion, no cooling in it yet, but we're just going to try and fire it because the engine, I hope, is ready to go. There's been a lot that's happened, I mean, no kidding. Everything's full of fluids, we've got oil, we've got a gauge hooked up for oil pressure. Uh, I'm not gonna run it long because there is no coolant, like I said, so I just wanna make sure that it will fire. Uh, <laughs> I really hope so. I have just crudely wired in some electronic ignition just to make it start, and there's our coil. It's, it's all over the place, but this is just to make it run. So we've got our trusty Demon carburetor on here that runs everything. I guess there's nothing else left to do but try it. We've already got it full of fuel. All we gotta do is turn the key. All right, folks, the moment of truth has finally arrived. That's power. Coil's hot. Oh boy, I'm nervous. I really hope this pays off. Here we go. Okay. Yes. Woo, man, that feels good. Wow, that feels good. Can you do it again? Okay. Or not? I think she needs a little more timing. But we just got 60 PSI of oil pressure. That is really good. Whew, a little smoky. So, I don't think I can get yeah, I can't get any more timing out of my distributor there. Uh, yeah, let's just, uh, I might have to rotate some wires here. But it ran! That's great! Oh, that's great. That is a great feeling. Whew! Man, that's been a lot of work. I'm, I'm telling you guys, that has been, wow, a bunch of late nights for this one. Okay, we've rearranged our plug wires here. Let's see if that helps any. is pretty good. Hot dog, man, that thing runs great. We had 65 PSI over here on our gauge. Well, the drain on the radiator wouldn't stop draining, no matter what I did, so we spilled probably a gallon of water out on the floor, so that's fun, but we have a radiator that is hooked up. Now we're just filling it up with some water, just in case something catastrophic happens, and then we'll put some cooling in it later on. But as you can see, she's looking mighty fine. Now we can start it up, check the temperature, make sure things are okay. It's got a 180 thermostat in it. Check for oil pressure when it gets warm. I hope it works, guys. Let's see what we can make happen. Forgot our ground wire. Oh, yeah, there she is. She's hot now. Let's try that again.
just in time to come see what it sounds like. fight it don't even fit right but it worked but it runs I, I, like it. I was about to put the drive shaft in it and get a shifter working so I could drive it you get your seal yeah I did After ordering two wrong ones I got the right one you'll ever want to know where I get it from That's where. So I spent a couple hours last night trying to build some kind of shifter. A couple problems, this one's worn out, a bushing was gone, and on top of that, the new transmission does not have the boss that actually mounts this shifter. So I couldn't use the factory style. I tried making my own with some parts I had laying around, but it just wasn't working. So what I did was opted for this, a B&M V-Gate shifter. It's a cable shifter, it's very simple. I've already mounted the shifter itself and ran the cable through the floor but just check out how smooth this thing is. So it's in low gear right now. Second, third, neutral, reverse, park. So simple, so simple. And it looks really cool. It makes this car look straight up race car now. I really like it. So no more whatever this is, we got that. Let's pick the car up and go underneath and we'll install it to the actual shifter on the transmission. If you want to know how dumb some of this electronics is, check this out. This one little wire kept everything from working. I have no idea what it does or where it goes, but it feeds directly into the battery, so it needs to have 12 volts. That killed every accessory in the car. Whatever it is, it would not start from the key. That's how I was having to start it with a power probe. But once I found that broken wire, I ran it directly to 12 volts, and then magically, everything works again. So I'm going to fix this wire just run it directly to the battery instead of cutting this little connector up. But we have everything sorted out, I believe. We've got the kick down linkage all done. We got throttle cable. I was able to use everything factory and original. And then on top of that, we got the shifter sitting inside the car. And I gotta say, it looks pretty cool. I like it. And I left the cover off of it just cause I think, well, it looks kind of tough. Now I guess now is the time. Let's see if we can fire it up, drive it out the shop. So if I did everything right, it should start now and I'm hoping that it'll take gear. I've got transmission fluid in there. I hope it's enough. We're gonna back it up if it starts. Make sure the transmission is full of fluid, but it's a big if. Let's try it. Well, we've got a serious problem. Uh, I will not take gear. I'm gonna hope that it's the gear selector. My gut says it's torque converter not seating properly, even though it had to whenever I put it in. I'm going to uh, drain the pan, check the shift lever. It does take park, I know for a fact, but I'm wondering if maybe something came unhooked. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm really, really hoping for something in the shift lever. So we're gonna drain the fluid out, catch it, make sure we don't spill anything because we can reuse it and if it looks fine, if everything works, we'll probably have to pull the transmission back out to get the torque converter. So here we go. Well, this transmission pan's already paying off. I like it already. How convenient, this little tray from Wildfire. 
holds basically the entire contents of a 904 transmission. Well, everything looks okay inside, but as you can see, we're putting a new filter in and we're gonna go with just a regular pan. Now, what I'm thinking is and what I'm hoping it is, well, I don't know if it actually is this, but you have to put this little block in here to lower the filter down when you run the deep pan. Now, what I'm thinking happened is uh, the last one that I did on these, it had a groove cut in it for an O-ring and that would seal up against the valve body. Now, on this one, it didn't have that. It didn't come with a gasket or anything, so I just put it on like it sits and popped it in place. I'm wondering if it's sucking air in between the valve body and the block itself. Now I could go get a gasket for it, but I'm just gonna hope and pray that the transmission's okay. I did see some clutch material in there, it kind of concerned me, but we're gonna just go back and eliminate any kind of possibilities. Lord, I hope this is a problem. Well, here goes nothing. Let's try it again. couple hours in and I think everything is unbolted and loose no fluid in the transmission so I'm gonna try and rock it back just a smidge oh yeah we're good now now the real question is how do I get it down now it's out on the cart I can wheel it around and check it out and see if anything's wrong with it well folks good news and bad news good news is the torque converter was fully seated. The bad news is the torque converter was fully seated. So I don't know what's happening here. Um, it's going into gear fine. The gear selector works, but for some reason there's no translation between the torque converter and the output shaft. So I don't know if it's a bad converter. I don't know if it's a bad transmission. That's what happens when you run the gamble on parts that are used that you buy second hand. Um, I thought they were both good, but I don't know, but instead of getting upset about it and really spending too much time on this one, I'm just gonna take the old transmission from the original car and put it back in place because I know it works. So this is the transmission that had water in it. So I've taken the valve body out and I've completely cleaned up as much as I possibly can. So the valve body's over here, soaking it up in the sun, drying out. I mean, I have just went through it. So I'm hoping that whatever residuals may be left over aren't going to be a problem but it's been completely disassembled, at least for the valve body's sake, and I was able to get up inside there and hopefully clean that out as much as possible. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then I guess we're out of luck again. So in editing, and this video is probably gonna be a couple minutes from whenever the transmission started acting up to now, but in reality, it's probably been two days. Two days of me pulling transmissions, being covered in transmission fluid, cleaning out the new one, and just really thrashing. So. I hope this one works. It's full of fluid. Everything's bolted back in place. We're gonna fire it up, check the fluid level in it, and then see if it'll move. <sighs> what is your problem now?
drive. driven off the limb. All right, this is how far we got last time. And now we're just a little bit further. <laughs> Oh, my fuel pump wire came off. Of course, right when I start filming, it quits. Yeah, she was empty. There we go. Anyway, we'll check the uh, transmission fluid one more time before we leave, but it went into gear, it backed out of its spot, and it is outside. Again, finally, for the first time in I don't know how long it's been since I did all this. A very long time. That's two. That's two. That's three. Oh, man. This is the first time this car has been on the road in a long time. I think it was last parked in like 93, so it's been a while. Let me go back down a second. Decent. Is it oil pressure? Or? Yeah, 60 psi the whole way over here. And that spark plug rode the whole way. I just noticed it on the way over here. Not bad for a shakedown run, is it? No. I can't tell if it's knocking or not because it's so loud, but it at least made it here. Well, as long as you don't put them up, or as long as you don't have to worry about knocking. Yeah. It's got to be the coolest cop car from this era. <laughs> right. I got it. it said I did 35, but I don't know if that was true or not. So maybe we could uh, get it finished and chase something with it. The only justified test. Don't try this at home, all right? Yeah. <laughs> you take it to the stop sign? Sure. There it went. Feel that? Torque converter's a little angry. Feel that?
awesome. It's not too bad, is it? No. No, I like it. Well folks, that about does it. We finally drove this car for the first time in 27 years. I am ecstatic to finally see this thing hit the road. I've been dying to do that. Now, we still have a lot of work left to do. There is so much on the board that we haven't finished yet, but we have a lot of stuff on order. We've got turbo parts, we've got all sorts of fuel injection, everything, fuel control, timing control on the way that we have to finish up. And hopefully in the next video, you should see a turbo under the hood of this car. It was just a big hassle to get this thing back on the road and running like it's supposed to be. So thankfully it's at that point and now we can move on and progress and hopefully get some upgrades in the way. So if you don't wanna miss out on that, make sure you subscribe, turn on those notifications so you don't miss anything like that. And if you enjoyed the video, if you really enjoyed seeing this car wake up from the dead, leave a like, leave a comment. It really helps me out and it helps out grow the channel. On top of that, t-shirts and stickers are down in the link below. If you wanna order one of those, all the money that comes from that goes directly back into supporting, buying and building these cars. So I greatly appreciate every single one of you who've supported the channel through the years and it's just been great. So thanks so much, I appreciate every single one of you and I will see you in the next one.